Hello and welcome to this Planner Masterclass. This is session one, project analysis. So I've got my planner file here. It's going to open in the Windows Planner application. Um, and for those of you familiar with Planner already, this is going to look fairly normal. Um, we've got a typical planner file which has got plans, risks and issues all within the same file. Um, and when we see our plan here, we can see it's one I've been working on for a while. Um, it's got 30 tasks, roughly. Um, it's quite a modest sort of plan, but it's a you know it's a meaningful plan. Um, now you always see it, or will have so far always seen it looking like this with a Gantt chart with tasks in task order and these particular data columns and predecessors and percentage completes and today's date timeline and things like that showing because. It's using the same view, the same instructions on how to display the data to you. And by using different instructions, we can get different analysis of that data. So I'm going to switch the ribbon here from the home ribbon, which has got the normal add, edit item things, into views and filters. Now I can use select a view to choose a view. We have two different types of views here, built in ones which are um, built into the application. You can't change and save those as updated ones and we've got plan views which are your own personalized ones saved against this plan so let's have a look at a couple of different ones we've got um, tasks starting in the next week so that's going to go away and find from today's date all the tasks that start within the next week you can see it's applied a filter it's narrowed those down so we're just looking at those tasks it's changed the di the tame time range here to show me just those activities and um, at the tasks at the bottom we've got different columns showing for them so it's changed that whole setup of what we might expect to see these filters can be switched on and off but the view is still controlling everything else columns time scales color schemes etc we can choose a different one so let's come back and choose overdue tasks and again you see the columns have changed uh, and the data has changed and we're now seeing list of overdue tasks um, and that's just done straight away for us so you know if we had a plan with hundreds and hundreds of tasks all with things running um, in similar time scales we'd have to jump around to try and find everything that was happening or everything that was overdue this just does it straight away for us and it focuses in on that activity we're not seeing the whole timeline of the project with a couple of small um, out of focus tasks we're focusing in right onto the the current stuff with a week on either side and we can see how all that happens using the edit view here so um, I've got a uh, uh, overdue task view we can see this general display is controlling things like the ordering of the tasks which are default so just in task order but if you're doing something like cost one you could order by the most expensive task first we're choosing what items are switched on and off in terms of uh, progress bars etc um, and whether we're going to show summary bars or not um, either never always or auto which is when they're selected via the filter mechanism filter which is of course the main bones of this view um, allows us to set up the rules which narrow down the tasks that we want to see <coughs> so we can have things switched on and off here I'm using um, just a couple of items here tasks should be complete and so each of these you define yourself based on the different rule types. So the name of this is task should be complete. And it's using a type finishes before date one. Date one is now plus zero weeks. So finishes before now include. So that's all tasks that should be finished by now. And then we're going to exclude so exclude tasks which are um, have a percentage complete of greater than or equal to 100. So task is complete, take it out of the list. So firstly, we narrow the list to all tasks that should be complete by now. Then we take out the ones that are complete. And that leaves us with the overdue tasks. Now, like I say, you can, this, you can have as many different rules in here as you want to. You can create new ones and add them all to the list, etc. If we switch on milestone only, and apply that you'll see behind the scenes it now only shows me overdue milestones because I've included a milestone element in that and of course I could edit that 
and say exclude milestones like that and apply and now we only get tasks which are overdue which are actual tasks not zero duration tasks so proper work tasks if you like rather than milestones so you know this is really once you get into the idea of how all this works pretty straightforward to change and the types of filter you've got here there's quite a lot of those um, things like schedules things about cost age and days name related things so you can do obviously search terms within task names we have some top items here so you can run the top five tasks or the top five percent of tasks and those will order based on the ordering item that we saw in the general display um, and those are normally applied at the end of the rule set so whatever else is, has been filtered out and then you do the top five of five percent of those so you can choose those to be whatever you want them to be color schemes we can change those again and that means different views can use different color schemes and that's often helpful when you're reporting display columns this is the set of columns that we're going to use to see the data at the bottom um, you can switch things on and off um, in, in fact often what happens is you switch things on and off you come back you, you change the orders around here dragging things around into where you want them and then read from current view reads those orders back in onto this form you can choose the piece of data that appears here on the Gantt chart attribute as well. Date ranges, so we're running an auto one here and it's showing me the filtered start date, uh, so the date of the first filtered task minus a week to the date of the last filtered task plus a week, so I get a week buffer on either side. I could do now or I could just use the full plan date range as well. So all these sorts of things here allow me to control exactly what we're seeing. Um, of course, this one is a is a plan view, so it's got plan type things in it. If we come and look at the risks one and I edit my risks view, of course, it's got risk related things in it. So here we're looking at do we see responses or not? Um, obviously, the filter type rules are, are similar, similar arrangement for filters, but you might have different um, obviously types so they're all about the data model within the risk um, area display columns are obviously different again etc so, so it's a similar idea and once you've worked on one it should be fairly obvious to work on the next one um, but uh, obviously different types of data so if we're going through and, and playing around with these and we're getting our view so I've now got my um, overdue working tasks thing and I want to now save that now within planner you can have these things um, savable or not savable that's up to you so we can see this plan has been set up and it's been locked so that users can't save the views now I can unlock that so that I will allow people to save views and now when I come back here I can save my view I'm going to call it overdue uh, working tasks like that and now we'll see when I come back to select a view I've got my new one here so I could come and look at uh, a cost view which is going to be quite different to the sort of views that we saw earlier you know in terms of the data so we're not filtering any of this but we are seeing a very different sort of set of data for these tasks that's quite a different approach um, and then I can come back to my overdue working tasks and we'll get back to the thing that we saved earlier. Now, these views, as we're working on them, like I say, they apply to um, everything within that area. So when we come to a risks view and we select a view, which is, for example, um, so here we, we've got 13 risks and we're seeing the charts and analysis associated with those 13 risks. When I select a view and I do top five ordered by residual expected value, and it gives me that in practice is only four because I don't think any of the rest of them have got monetary values against them we see that the charts have all changed everything in the analysis has changed to reflect that limited more limited data set so it's giving me the ability to do all my analysis on a restricted set of data and I can change these to be whatever I want to helpfully a whole load of useful things pre-populated but then I can go away and do much more with that um, so that's talking about uh, project analysis using views in planner 
um, in some of the later planner masterclass sessions we're going to be looking at then reporting out on this content um, uh, and uh, and various other such interesting topics okay i hope you found that helpful feel free to um, leave a comment or um, drop us a question if you've got one thank you